Hello to you. Uh, I get asked this question quite a bit in economics class. Uh, why do the prices of stocks change? And we do have a model that explains it, although uh, further study you know, can be done in a, in a finance class. They can go much more in depth into this. Um, but the basic model of economics holds up even in um, financial products, right? like stocks and, and uh, also bonds. So uh, wild week this week. Right, uh, so we saw downward pressure in the price, and at the very basic level, uh, it can be explained that more people wanted to sell than wanted to buy, and that's going to push downward pressure on the equilibrium price, which we've learned about. Uh, on Friday, we had some uh, positive action there, so more people wanted to buy than sell. Okay, so we can apply all these models to uh, to what kind of what's going on. Uh, and if you think about uh, you know all the stocks, right, maybe like the uh, the S and P. 500, which is the 500 uh, companies that the Standard & Poor's has picked out, um, you know, kind of the movers and shakers in the uh, economy. Um, so we have a price, we have a quantity, and you can actually trade the whole um, uh, the whole thing, right? So it's a financial product itself. Uh, so we'll use green. So there, there's some kind of demand for uh, the stocks of the S&P 500 or even individual stocks, right? And uh, when the price goes down, uh, they'll demand more quantity of stocks. And, and this, in financial terms, often is going to be uh, uh, the volume. Okay, so you know it's it's we see all of this stuff show up. Okay, now it tends to be stocks supply don't change that much, right? So we have kind of a inelastic uh, supply curve, and we'll cover that later in the course. Uh, but if you think back to um, so we've got this this whatever this price is and so we can actually look up what the S&P was at right now so there it is so it's at 2600 we'll just round it there so it's at 2600 okay that's the price of all of these stocks in the S&P 500 it's a, a weighted average there um, and so if we come back to our, our model of why anything, the price of anything changes, um, with stocks it has a lot to do with demand. Okay, so if you think about, um, because the supply doesn't change that much, right? Now, now there are uh, determinants of supply, but let's go over the, the demand changes. So first, um, tastes. Okay, so as uh, people have a taste for uh, financial products, if they want to buy more, if they feel good about it, if they feel bullish about it, this is going to push our uh, demand to the right. Okay, more people are going to want to invest. They're going to think about, um, hey, I want to get involved in that market, and this is going to push upward pressure on the price. Right. Similarly, if you get a time of a very pessimism, maybe back in uh, 2000 and uh, when was that? 2009, uh, where people were were very fearful. Okay, and they. Uh, we're more bearish on the stock market. This this is going to push downward pressure on the price. Okay, so we may have entered that in this current week. This is uh, February 2018. Who who knows, right? It's not where you think it's going to go. Uh, next, uh, related goods. Now in stocks, uh, these related goods are going to be um, uh, complementary goods. So as uh, E Trade and Robinhood and other uh, places make it easier to invest. Okay, this is going to push the demand uh, to the right, and it's going to push. It's going to bring more investors to the table, so it's going to increase that. Now, also uh, the the related good in terms of stocks uh, tends to be bonds, right? So as the stock, the value of the price of stocks tends to go down, the prices of uh, and the yields on on bonds tend to go up, and so there's that inverse relationship between. Uh, substitute goods like stocks and bonds, right? So that that'll change um, change those as investors move their money around. Next is income. So if uh, the unemployment rate starts to go down, we should see more investment because people will put more money into their four hundred one k or consumer investors will invest more. Um, and uh, additionally, um, if the unemployment rate goes up, we're going to see less demand for stocks because people are going to sell their stocks and, and get out there and there's going to be less demand uh, push the price back down. Uh, number of buyers, so if the population is going up we should see an increase in demand, right? More people means more investors if um, more people around the world are able to get involved 
if uh, you know something bad were to happen, um, you know money money capital were to leave the, the U.S. economy and go to go somewhere else, uh, this would be a decrease. And then finally, expectations of future price. What do investors think is going to happen? So right now, when I film this, it's 2018. Uh, a lot of times, investors are are thinking about what the the profits of uh, future uh, for firms is going to be, right? So what what what's the profit going to be? in 2019 or in quarter four right so you might think uh, a stock maybe like Best Buy or Amazon you know you think well the American economy is doing much better and therefore I expect them to sell more so I'm gonna buy it more I'm gonna buy those stocks in, in earlier quarters um, headed for the Christmas season now uh, that's the way out ahead of time right and everybody else is kinda of thinking this so there's this efficient market hypothesis that you should study up on and uh, but the basic model is if we think that the product is gonna uh, be sold more or there are gonna be more sales uh, we expect that price to go up in the future and that we're gonna buy more right now which is gonna push upward pressure on this price now similarly if we think maybe there's gonna be a bunch of inflation or you know a bunch of unemployment or you know bad trade deals or something like that then this is gonna cause less uh, demand, right? A, a good stock to think about this would be uh, a company like Sears, right? Which has had disappointing earnings for a couple of years. It's not a popular product with a lot of uh, younger folks, and a lot of people expect, um, you know, they'll call it like a downgrade and things like that. They're expecting uh, you know, pessimism, and so this is going to uh, cause a decrease in, in the demand there. Um, now, uh, we could also think about the supply, okay? So companies. Because when you buy a stock, basically you are uh, buying ownership in this publicly traded um, company. So if demand isn't really changing, uh, the firm can change the supply. So maybe they do what's called a stock buyback, right? If they do a stock buyback, they're, what they're really doing is buying stock back from the public. And they're, why can't I draw an arrow? They're decreasing the amount of stock in on the market, right? So... Um, when they do this, it puts upward pressure on that stock. Okay, you might also see in the news when they do a stock split. Okay, and a stock split is the company is now creating more stock. Okay, or they might just issue more stock. And if they do that, uh, it's going to knock the price down. Now, if this is a really good company, uh, investors will pick up on this and they'll say, well. You know, now I can buy more, so I'm going to buy more quantity of stock. But then, you know, I'm betting on the future, and this should put upward pressure on this on this value of this, the stock, right? So this is this is sort of an economics model of, of uh, just a very basic thing. You can apply this um, if you inverse everything that I said. It, it applies to bonds. It applies in currency markets. Um, you know, the tenets of supply and demand. You know, can be used in, in in a very pure way in in financial markets. So, uh, understanding this stuff is uh, you know pretty valuable. I also recommend though that uh, you know you could take a take a finance class and think about more about the technical nature of some of these investments. But uh, but the supply and demand holds holds pretty true uh, as well. Thank you.